Hello everyone, today I have a video especially for you who enjoy shooting with vintage lenses and especially for you who own a DSLR. As we know, DSLRs are not the greatest camera around to use for vintage lenses. The reason why a DSLR is not the greatest camera for shooting with a vintage lens is because we have a mirror in a way. But hey, you might react of that because the older SLR cameras, the vintage cameras with film, they also have a mirror in it. But there's a difference because if you look here, we see over here that there is something going on here. Every DSLR camera have a matte box or a, a focusing screen. And that focusing screen is located up in this area. And that goes for everyone. Over here, we see these things in the middle that we're gonna talk a little bit more about. The thing we see in the middle is a split image view. And some split image views also combine, are combined with a micro prism. This means that you have two images that when your picture is in focus, they are aligned. And it's quite easy for you to know when your picture are in focus. The modern DSLR don't have this feature. Some of them, though, has the ability to, where you could change the focusing screen just by tapping a little thing over here, and then you could pick it up. But you can't buy a split image focus screen to every DSLR on the market. For example, this is a Canon 60, and there's no option to buy this. Well, there is third-party options but they are quite expensive and sometimes a little bit hard to get your hands on but i got my hands on a nikon fm or a nikon em this is a quite simple camera it's uh well as it looks it's a slr camera where you can change lenses, but most of the functions on this camera are manual functions, or I mean automatic functions. So this SLR camera is not the nicest one. It's not the one you want if you would want to shoot with uh, film and so on. So what I figured out is that on this one specifically, there's a screw here. Undo this screw. and out comes what you see here, a focusing screen. Normally it uh, doesn't fall out like this because, well, maybe you don't shake it like this. Then it will like fall down, look like this and it will fall down. And you could just take it out. Don't put your fingers on this because ev every little scratch you get on this or fingerprint or anything like that, it's gonna be visible in your viewfinder. So, the Canon 6D has the ability to change focusing screen. And it's quite simple. You have this little tap here, just pull that upwards, and down comes the focusing screen. As mentioned before, don't put your fingers on the focusing screen because you might want to put it back. So, I'm gonna be very, very careful. Hold the edges, put it in a bag, and put this one aside. Here comes the interesting part. This focusing screen from the Nikon camera, the old Nikon camera, it actually fits inside the Canon camera. Well, more or less. So let's get it in there. Boom, like this. And let's pull it up. Boom. Now what we have is a DSLR camera with a focusing screen and a micro prism. It helps a lot when you're gonna use like manual lenses. Like for example here we have an old Helios 44, which is a cool manual lens, but it's so hard to focus the DSLR cameras. So my suggestion is that you buy a adapter like this. This is a M42 that goes to Canon EF. Screw this on into your camera, and now you could attach the M42 lens to your Canon camera and your Canon DSLR. 
This is a funny experience because it gives you an optical viewfinder. It reminds of using an analog camera and the shooting experience is quite similar in many ways. If Pentax K lenses are your melody or you don't want to use the M42, there's other kinds of adapters. Here I have a, a Pentax K to EOS adapter. So it's more or less the similar thing here. You take your Pentax K lens and you simply put it on the adapter. However, most of the adapters comes with this little hinge here that keeps the um, lens secure. So if you only have one of these, you could remove this hinge. And with this hinge removed, you could easily attach a lens and then it's quite easy to remove again. So you have the lens on the camera and if you want to remove the lens, you simply just like push it a little bit and you could remove it. You should be aware though that there's nothing locking this lens onto the camera. So if it's twisted, it could come off, but it fits there pretty firmly. So I don't think you have to worry about that. Of course, the most optimal thing is to buy plenty of these little rings and keep this little hinge. So you could just like change the lens as you would do with any other lens. But if you want to save some money, you could just remove this and you could use the same adapter for all your lenses. Pretty simple. And another nice thing is that if you're already shooting with some mirrorless cameras, for example, a Sony here, you could buy the adapter that goes from Canon EF to Sony. And then you only need one adapter in order to use all your vintage lenses on your Sony. That's pretty good if you have multiple systems or if you don't want to spend money on getting an adapter for like M42 and an adapter for uh, Pentax K. And also when you're changing lenses, it's just one lens to take off. Imagine if you have like, okay, I want to change here. I take this one off. Now I need to take the adapter off. I need to put another adapter in and then I need to put on the lens. So it provides an experience that reminds a little bit more like just a removing a native lens. So if you like this kind of video, give it a thumbs up. If you like this channel and you want to see more camera related content, subscribe and click that bell icon. Thanks for watching. I see you later.